So a lot of times when I go to the store, I end up spotting things that I think, hey, maybe that would make like a cool video uh, for the show. Uh, for example, the other day I went to Target and I saw one of those My Arcade miniature uh, arcade cabinets. Not the ones everyone's buying now, the, the one-up things, but like something that's maybe only like this tall or, you know, I, well, I don't know if that means anything to you, like 12 inches tall or something. And it was like 80 bucks, but then it was in the clearance section for like $23 or something. And I thought, well, gee, I could pick that up and make like a little quick video with it. Maybe that would be cool. But I mean, how, you know, I can only imagine how many like review videos there already are of something like that. And that, that's not even what I would be doing. It's just like, hey, here's this stupid thing we could check out. So, so I didn't get it. But, but a lot of times I do pick up stuff with the intention of at some point making a video with it. And so then it just ends up like in a pile somewhere, uh, you know, here at CGQHQ. And uh, that's really not the case with this pack. I bought this pack uh, actually several years ago and just never really got around to opening it. Uh, so I don't really know anything about the series. I've, obviously it says Battle of the Bands. But uh, this one, which I picked up, feels like it was within the last year, but at this point I wouldn't swear to it. Uh, this I hate or we hate the 90s set. Uh, I bought this really with the intention of making a video like this with it where we would just kind of uh, open it together and just check out uh, what's in here. Because, you know, I did that Garbage Pail Kids video and uh, it seems like it was well received to me. And, um, you know, normally I wouldn't do something like this again, but just because of the we hate the 90s theme, you know, hopefully there'll be some sort of nostalgic stuff in there uh, for us to check out. But but first we can open up this uh, Battle of the Bands one. So this says it has 22 uh, sticker cards in it, uh, plus two exclusive 80s stickers. So we'll have to just kind of figure out uh, what that means. Uh, oh, this is cool already. Check. Here, let me move it to the side. So first already we've got Aching Angus. So I'm sure that's, uh, what was his name? Angus Young from uh, from ACDC. That's pretty cool. Uh, Ed Sheeran. Uh, maybe I'm a little bit too old. I'm not really super familiar with, with Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran is how you say that, right? We didn't look at the back. Uh, oh, it just says Hard Rock Sticker. Well, that's kind of boring. Uh, so Ed Sheeran. Uh, oh, look at that. Uh, Bearded Billy. Uh, from ZZ Top. That's pretty awesome. I was really into ZZ Top when I was a kid because my uncle Dallas, that was his name, Dallas. Well, it still is his name. Uh, looked like this middle guy. I, I don't know. The, that's like the guy nobody knows his name, but uh, uh, you know, these two are the Gibbons brothers, and I don't think he's their brother, but I, I wouldn't even swear to it. Uh, here you got uh, Dueling David. I don't, I don't really get the reference. It's going to be possible. I'm not going to get the reference with some of these uh, I mean, I'm, I barely understood the Ed Sheeran thing, so uh, I don't really, uh, unless, is that like maybe a uh, uh, Van Halen kind of thing? I, I don't, because that looks like David Lee Roth and Sammy Hagar, so I, maybe that's what that is? That'd be kind of cool if it was. Uh, glowing Jimmy, uh, that's kind of cool that you know, there was the famous show where, where Jimmy let it, uh, Jimmy Hendrix lit his guitar on fire and then there he is roasting marshmallows over it. So that's pretty cool. These are pretty cool so far. I'm, I'm pretty impressed actually. Uh, this one, I definitely do not get the reference, uh, insane Ian. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and here, this one's pretty cool. Uh, met, met Al, but I mean, that's obviously supposed to be, uh, Metallica. Uh, even with uh, with the the to me he's still the new bassist uh, Rob Trujillo even though he's been the bassist now for I mean how long like fifteen years or something like that but uh, to me he's like still the new guy which I guess that attitude within the band is what got Jason Newstead to leave in the first place but uh, anyway uh, Dragon Dan so I don't know is that supposed to be I guess that's Imagine Dragons right I don't I don't know it's funny so Imagine Dragons like you know everybody I work with. Uh, well, at work, uh, are, they're all much younger than me. Like it's me and like a bunch of people in their twenties and like a couple people that are like 30. And so sometimes I have like a hard time relating to them. And so like the only band I can ever think of, I'm trying to like, say like the stereotypical band that like I, as a 40 something year old think that they listen to the only one I can ever come up with is Imagine Dragons which I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure that the people still even listen to them. I have no idea. It's just, I guess I'm kind of out of touch with that. 
Uh, Fallout Boyd for, for Fallout Boy. That one's okay, I guess. Uh, oh, look at that. Bithead 1000, are you out there? Uh, there's Iron Maiden. I should, you know, I got something I need to send to Bithead. I think I'm going to, I'm going to throw this in the mail, uh, with it and send that to him. That's pretty awesome. Uh, oozing Ozzy for obviously Ozzy Osbourne. Uh, you know, uh, there was the famous, uh, thing when I was a kid. I, is this true or not? I don't even know. But when I was a kid, the, the famous story about Ozzy Osbourne on the playground was that he bit the head off of a live bat. Uh, on stage. I'm pretty sure it's true. Actually, I think I might've even seen an interview where he talked about it. Uh, so here you see that there's a bat ripping his head off. So that's pretty clever. I think, uh, awful Ariana. Uh, that's pretty funny. I mean, I don't, I couldn't tell you a single, uh, Ariana Grande song. I don't even really understand how I know who she is. I guess probably just from Reddit or something, but that's pretty funny. They stuck her in a Starbucks cup. Uh, oh, these are cool. I don't know if these are supposed to be like something special because they have this like slimy border, but, uh, uh, are we not Manny? Uh, obviously that's Devo, uh, pretty, I don't know if I'd say I'm a big fan of Devo. I enjoy Devo's music. Uh, I don't, I think if I said I was a big fan, that'd be overstating things, but that's a pretty cool card. Uh, and then Ringo of Fire, obviously that's Johnny Cash, uh, who has been, I guess impaled is not the right word. I don't know what you'd say. Uh, he had a, uh, meteorite go through him, but, uh, that's a pretty cool card. Uh, Swift breakup. Oh, look at that ex ex boyfriend grinder. Uh, obviously, that's uh, Taylor Swift. I'm doing better than I thought I would uh, with these. Uh, oh, that's a pretty cool one too. Daryl Daryl Punk. Uh, obviously, that's uh, that's Daft Punk. I'm not super familiar with a lot of Daft Punk uh, songs. I mean, like there's Get Lucky, and then I don't. I couldn't name another Daft Punk song, but somehow I think they're cool anyway. I don't even know what that means. Uh, here, I don't know if I'm going to get this one. Harry, Harry, it goes again. All right. I don't, that one I don't get. Somebody can explain that one, uh, to me. They don't say anything, uh, on the back. So I don't, yeah, I don't get that. Uh, scary Perry. Oh, that's Katy Perry. All right. I was thinking like Steve Perry from foreigner. So, um, but, uh, and then, yeah, she's got fireworks coming out of her head there. Uh, why is there a shark in the background? I don't get, uh, I don't get that reference. Uh, I don't really understand the shaving cream there either. So, but uh, at least I knew who it was. And then stinging Sumner. So I guess that's. I mean, is that supposed to be sting? I mean, he's he's holding a base. So, other than that, I don't really I don't understand the Sumner reference. I guess. Uh, and then we can already see next. We got John Cougar Mellencamp. Uh, is he still going? Because he was John Cougar for a while, and then he was John Cougar Mellencamp for a while. And then wasn't he just John Mellencamp for a while? Uh, I, I don't know. I've never been the hugest fan of John Mellencamp. Wait, he's all right. Uh, next, we got uh, Mutilated Michaels. Uh, is that that's supposed to be Brett Michaels, I guess? I forgot. Was he? He was. Uh, oh, well, it kind of tells you there. He was the lead singer of Poison. Because, see, there he's drinking Poison. So uh, that one's all right there. Uh, Gross Gwen. <laughs> so that's pretty funny. So that's, that's obviously Gwen Stefani. And I forgot this guy's name, like, right. She was, she was going out with the guy from Bush, which I thought was cool. Cause like when they were popular in the nineties, I was a pretty big Bush fan. Uh, but then they divorced. And then this is that guy. My wife went through a phase where she was watching the voice. And, uh, when, when Gwen was on there and that that's, he's this country singer that they started going out together, but you know, he's like quite a bit older than she is, but I mean, who cares? But Anyway, uh, and then we got who we got here. Fr Fouled Frank. I don't know. Is that supposed to be Frank Zappa? I, I really don't know. I got nothing. Uh, and then bad name Bon or Bon Jovi, uh, getting uh, getting his heart shot out by Cupid. There, that's pretty cool. Uh, and then the bad name obviously is from the "You Give Love a Bad Name" uh, uh, song. But you know, if I had known these were going to be this cool, I would have opened them a long time ago. To be honest, um, I'm, I'm pretty impressed by all of these. Uh, I should have bought some more packs. But again, I've had these for like literally years, so these are these are like long gone uh, from the um, uh, store shelves. So those were pretty cool. But again, the, the the ones that I really bought specifically to show on the show uh, are these. I hate the '90s. Uh, uh, cards and it says it's got five packs, 
three exclusive bathroom buddies stickers. I don't even know what that means. So we'll just check it out. I don't know if there's anything on the box that's really worth looking at. Uh, oh, that's funny. Uh, Lunchables. I, I mean, Lunchables, I guess, are still pretty popular, right? But I feel like Lunchables came out. Well, they probably didn't come out then. Like, I remember noticing Lunchables when I was in, like, high school. It seemed like it was a popular lunch item for a lot of, like, high school girls to bring. But, uh, I mean, it's pretty funny because Lunchables really are not very good for you. And uh, I, of course, never got them because they were too expensive. Um, I, but I don't know if I even really wanted them at the time, to be honest. I mean, I don't, I don't really look at a Lunchable and, and think, like, yeah, I want to eat that. And I, I love junk food, but Lunchables just look kind of gross. Get rid of that. Um, it's for some reason it's popular for tops to use this kind of packaging where like you open it and there's hardly anything really in there. I guess maybe the box is just so big to make it harder to steal because I mean you see how you see how full the box is, not very. So uh, yeah, we don't need that anymore. So we got our five packs here. And then I don't know. Let, we can check out these bathroom buddies things first, just because I don't really, um, I don't really know. It says here, "Congratulations, you now own a one-of-a-kind piece of hand-drawn art." Is that actually even true? Let's find out. By the way, uh, we're using scissors to open these. Uh, you know, my uh, my finish no loitering sign, which is right up that way, gets a lot of attention on the show, and I always say that. Uh, uh, you know, I brought that back as like a souvenir when I went to Finland and this was aside from like candy uh, This was the only other thing I brought back as a souvenir from Finland uh, Fiskars is actually a Finnish company and if you buy Fiskars in Finland, they're actually made in Finland So this is like a really nice pair of scissors and I tried to tell my coworker, you know I was there on a work trip and I was telling my coworker who who lives in Finland and is Finnish You know, I said in, in the United States Fisker scissors are made in China and, and like, he wouldn't believe me. He's like, no, 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 Fiskars are made in Finland. And I'm like, no, 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 I get it. They're made in Finland here. Like, he couldn't believe that the Fiskars company would, would do such a thing. But, uh, yeah, these are pretty nice scissors. Anyway, nobody cares about scissors. Uh, so let's check out uh, what's in here. I think the the scissors might be making a comeback, though. I don't know. So what, what do we got here? Oh, I think we're going to have to. This is, like, folded up, I think. Oh, no, no, never mind. Here we go. Here we go. So is this, I guess this is hand drawn. I don't, I don't, I guess it's a puzzle we have to kind of put together here. So, sorry, bathroom buddies have to move too much garbage. So we got that, that. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's pretty cool. Uh, is it hand drawn? I don't know. It says it's hand drawn. I don't really have any reason to doubt that. Um, sketch card. So I don't, I mean, I don't know if there was one of these in every pack or if somehow I got lucky and got this. So I don't know who, um, Nigma, N-Y-G-M-A, I guess that's the last name. Uh, well, B, Nigma. Uh, anyway, I don't know. That, that seems pretty neat. But what are these bathroom buddies all about is what I'd like to know. Uh, this sticker features a previously unpublished painting from the Lost Second series of Bathroom Buddies, the 90s GPK spinoff. So I didn't, uh, either I never knew about these or I just don't remember them. But um, yeah, they just seem like they're, you know, uh, bathroom related garbage pail kids. There's Wet Willie who's getting peed on by the sink. Uh, Mark Territory, that one's pretty funny. I'm, uh, I'm babysitting somebody's dog right now, <clears throat> and she's actually downstairs, but she's being quiet, thank goodness. So I can kind of extra relate to this one right now. Although yesterday I took her for a walk, and she walked right past, uh, a fire hydrant. I was pretty shocked. And, uh, well, Surf Murph is just surfing in the shower, so at least that one's not, uh, excreta related. So now we can check out some of these uh, We Hate the 90s. So these only have eight cards each, so these should go uh, pretty quick. Man, this just takes me back to being a kid and buying uh, the Garbage Pail Kids packs at the, at the local liquor store for, you know, 25 cents, I believe is what they were. Uh, oh, man, check that out. So I always think of the George Foreman grill... Uh, I was in, when I was in college, 
uh, you know, after I'd moved out uh, from living at home and, and, you know, was living with roommates, you know, and whatnot, like I moved away a little bit to go to college. Uh, we all had, like all my friends, we all had George Foreman grills because you could get like the little George Foreman grill for like 20 bucks. And then we would go to the store and buy that big package of frozen chicken breasts. And we were just going nuts with those things. So um, that's just always what I think of when I think of the George Foreman grill. But, you know, good on him. I mean, I mean, I think he probably made more money off of those things than he ever made box. I don't know that for a fact, but I mean, that that grill was very, very popular. Still kind of disappointed that there's nothing on the back of these. You know, that was like half the fun with the Garbage Pail Kids back in the day was what was on the back of the card. Uh, Cannon Bell. Uh, I don't really... I don't really get the reference there. Uh, Gene Co. I, for, what were, I forgot the name of these jeans. This was not something I ever... I was too old for this, so I didn't ever get into these. But I can't remember the name of the... These, these were those oversized jeans, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, that one's pretty funny. So this is another one of these slimy border ones. So I guess this must somehow be rarer. Like, who cares? But, uh, yeah, there's Dennis Rodman, who apparently is dying his armpit hair. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, that, that guy was quite the character back then. Uh, oh, ripped Upton. So this guy was on the um, on the cover. So I'm not sure this is making a specific reference to anything other than just sort of the fashion of the time. Uh, somebody else can tell me if I'm wrong, but uh, that's this is definitely how a lot of people dressed, uh, especially I would say in the early '90s. Uh, Dunga Dunga Reese. So uh, again, I don't. I mean, to me, I don't remember like uh, overalls being that big of a deal back in the '90s. But you know, maybe. Well, that's not true. I guess. And I think about it, like in the late '90s uh, when I was in community college, there were a lot of girls wearing uh, wearing overalls. I guess. But that's kind of an esoteric reference. Uh, how do you get doubles in the in the same freaking pack? That's not cool. And then here's these uh, uh, trolls. Uh, I, to me, this is more of an '80s thing. Uh, the trolls, but uh, I mean, I guess they were maybe still around uh, in the '90s. I remember you would get the the troll uh, pencil toppers. You don't know, have it on top of the pencil, and then you'd like wag the pencil around real fast to make their hair all crazy. But again, that, I'm talking about when I was in like elementary school, which would have been like you know. The, the meaty part of the 80s. All right, what else we got here? Uh, oh, Half Wit Harry. So that, that's obviously a Dumb and Dumber uh, reference. I don't remember the other character's name, so I don't know if there's a B version. You know, oh, yeah. So this is 9A. So obviously there's a 9B. So at least, at least they still have the twin cards like they had back in the 90s, even though they're getting lazy with the backs here. Uh, oh, that's a cool one. What's in the box? Or wit, wit's in the box. Uh, you know, of course, a reference to Seven. Uh, I don't remember what year Seven came out. I don't think I saw Seven until like 2000, uh, I think is when I saw it. But uh, definitely a, a huge movie back then. And I mean, what's in people still quote that line on Reddit like all the time. What's in the box? Uh, Bop Kit? I don't, uh, I don't get that one. I don't know. Somebody, somebody enlighten me. Zvbot. I don't know. Are these like '90s toys? Maybe that's why I don't get some of these. I wasn't playing with toys really anymore uh, by then. Uh, oh, that's funny. Uh, Roseanne Bark instead of Roseanne Bar. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about this on another show or something. But I always loved uh, Roseanne the show. Uh, she's kind of an interesting character, but I mean, you can't deny that she was talented. But uh, yeah, this kind of reminds me. If anybody has seen the. Uh, if you saw it back then, or I remember it was a big deal back then when she sang the national anthem at a baseball game and was like terrible at it. But uh, that's kind of what this reminds me of. Uh, Ding Dong Dustin. Oh, oh, yeah, okay, that's uh, Saved by the Bell. Duh. Uh, that's uh, I forgot his last name, but he played Screech. Uh, Dustin, whatever the heck his last name is, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, Bowen, Bowen Arrow. Um, I th is that just maybe a reference to Nerf toys? I mean, it kind of looks like that. It looks like a Nerf bow and arrow, right? I never, like, I, I played with Nerf toys in the 80s, so I was playing with, like, the the Nerf footballs or Nerf uh, indoor miniature golf. Wrestled Ren, uh, Ren and Stimpy, uh, obviously. I didn't really, maybe this is going to be uh, sacrilege to some people. I just didn't watch that much Ren and Stimpy. Uh, I don't even have a good reason why not. It's not like I didn't think it was funny. Uh, when I did watch it, but I mean, I was a big Beavis and Butthead fan, 
uh, back in the 90s. But for some reason, Ren and Stimpy, I just never really uh, got into. Uh, Boyd Meets World. That's Again, I never watched Boy Meets World. Uh, I, I think I was a little bit... I was a little bit too old for some of this stuff, I would say, you know, by like, well, 1997, I turned 20. So, I mean, I was still in my teens in the early, uh, early half of the 90s, but um, I never really watched that. Uh, Afraid of the Mark. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that either. Only, the only scary clown I can think of from back in the day was It and Poltergeist, and those are both 80s, and that's not what either of these things are. So, I don't really get that one. A pretty Wanda. Yeah, I don't, this is why I wish they put some stuff on the back, you know. Uh, I don't again. I just don't get it. We already saw that one. Uh, that's that's pretty. This is kind of timely. Uh, you got uh, Annie Pack because you know, I feel like for a very short time in maybe like 1991, like fanny packs were like socially acceptable to wear. And it, it's frustrating. Like I wish I could wear a fanny pack. It would be so handy. But you know, I'm way too self conscious. Like the, you know, I have to try to dress nice. I, I would never wear a fanny pack. Although now I'm noticing on the college campus where I work, it seems like fanny packs are starting to make a little bit of a comeback, but, uh, I'm still not gonna, I'm still not gonna get one. I, I like the track suit, uh, kind of in the background too. Uh, and this one's pretty awesome. This is my favorite one so far. Uh, slurping Mario and, uh, I don't know, he's slurping up controller cables. That's just pretty cool. Nintendo 64, uh, reference. I like that one. Uh, Joe about uh, is another cool one. So Joe about nothing. Obviously, uh, I was just watching the show last night. Uh, Seinfeld, the show about nothing. But um, yeah, that one that one's pretty cool. Except I feel like that and that both kind of look like Elaine. I mean, there's Kramer and George, and that has to be Elaine. So that's Jerry. But somehow those kind of both just look like Elaine to me. But anyway, it's still a cool card. And then oh man, this is a good pack. Uh, Splatlosphere Pierre. Uh, so it's funny. I, I was, well, it's not funny at all, actually, but I was watching Sunday night football last night and they had this little memorial thing because I guess one of the guys that created American gladiators, uh, just passed away. And I mean, I used to love this show and uh, I don't know, I guess at some point, maybe I'll talk about it on an episode of flashback or something, but, uh, this show used to air where I lived on, uh, Sunday evening, like, like, I think it was on Sundays at like five. So it was like, you know, Stuart, if I was hanging out with Stuart, I'd probably, you know, he had to go home to eat with his family. And uh, so I kind of had nothing to do. I was probably a little bit bummed out because it was Sunday night, you know, and I couldn't stand the fact that I had to go to school the next day. Uh, football was over for the day because uh, at that time we didn't have cable. And back in the 90s, uh, Sunday night football was on ESPN instead of on NBC. So Sunday nights were just kind of a bummer for me. Uh, at least until primetime started, because I had some Fox primetime shows that I enjoyed watching. But, like, I would never miss uh, American Gladiators. So uh, that's three really cool cards in a row. Two packs uh, two packs left. Oh, that one's pretty funny, too. You guys all remember the Y2K scare, and then absolutely nothing happened. Although, I don't know how much of it was that nothing happened because people got everything fixed in time. Or how much of it was just scaremongering. Uh, I don't really know. But um, but yeah. Uh, Doodle. Doodle Daryl. Uh, I don't get that one. And yeah. I don't know. I mean I know people. Like girls used to like doodling on their jeans. Is that what that's supposed to be making reference to? I don't, I don't really know. Uh, Wrangle and Rocky again. Uh, no idea. Seems like maybe that's like a children's show reference. Uh, Spawn Sean. So is that. I mean I guess maybe that's the comic book uh character spawn uh, i never read that one so uh maybe that's why taylor oh taylor moon is sailor moon uh so it's funny i never i never watched sailor moon uh or i don't know did it start off as a as a anime or manga i don't even know which but uh i just remember where i worked in the late 90s there was this girl who this other guy that i worked for always called her sailor moon because to him she she looked like she looked like, or I guess she definitely looked like an anime character. She had, like, huge eyes. Not in a bad way. I mean, she was an attractive girl, but uh, in, in some way she kind of looked like an anime character. Oh, look at that. That's pretty awesome. Uh, I didn't see The Big Lebowski until, like, 2004 or 2005. 
uh, like I'd always heard of it, and but I, I didn't know anything about it at all. And I had a friend that just kept saying how great it was. And so I rented it and watched it. And it's one of those times where like I watched it and then I instantly felt like an idiot for not watching it like way sooner because uh, it's so awesome. And it, that's pretty neat. You see the um, the reflection uh, on his glasses is, you know, the guy peeing on the rug, you know, uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, Chocolate Chuck. Uh, I saw uh, Forrest Gump in the movie theater, actually. I, I really liked it. I remember I went I went and saw it with my mom and my grandma. Uh, I forgot when it came out, but I think I'm pretty sure I was still in high school. And I just remember my mom, my mom hated it because she felt like between Forrest Gump and Beavis and Butthead, my mom thought that that stupidity was being glorified, which at least as far as Forrest Gump goes, in my opinion, couldn't be further from the truth. And uh, Milky J, I don't know, I don't really, I mean, is this from the Got Milk commercials and print ads? Maybe, I guess. I don't know. Because he always had the milk mustache, right? And this guy's got a full-on milk hippie beard. Uh, last package. Not too many doubles so far, uh, which is cool. Uh, Butterfly Beverly, I guess, is that just because... Certainly butterflies, yeah. 90s fashion sticker. Uh, just because... I remember, like, girls would get, like, butterfly patches and, like, put them on their jeans or put them on their backpacks. Uh, oh, wow. Natester. Man, I was the hugest Napster fan in, like, I don't know, when When would this have been? Like, 96, 97? Uh, I remember, like, Napster just opened up, like, whole new worlds of music for me. It's so funny and yet predictable how negative the reaction was to Napster from the music industry. Because it, it got me into whole new genres of music and got me buying CDs that I otherwise never would have bought. And, uh, I mean, I understand why, you know, just letting people download whatever they want for free is not a sustainable business model. But you can definitely thank Napster for being the the sort of foundational reason of why you can now buy single songs for like a dollar or a dollar thirty instead of having to buy an entire album or at the very least buy like a, a single on CD or something for like half the price of an album. Uh, yeah, I mean, I still have tons of MP3s that um, that I've had since, you know, since the Napster days uh, on my computer. Uh, Fight Bub for, uh, for Fight Club. So I've only seen Fight Club once, and uh, I don't really remember the movie uh, just because I wasn't sober when I watched it. So, but I don't know. It doesn't kind of seem one hundred percent like my movie, my kind of movie, but uh, but definitely a big movie uh, in the nineties. I guess now we have the more limited edition of Ripped Upton. I don't really care. Uh, Scud Buster, uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, you guys remember? Well, I mean, there's nothing awesome about war, I guess, but. Uh, but you know the the Gulf War was a was a pretty big deal uh, back when that happened in the early '90s. Um, you know, I re I remember that was kind of the first you know war that I felt like I was old enough to be kind of aware of, and uh, so I had kind of weird feelings about it. But but you know, I remember us you know we would learn about the Patriot missiles because you know Saddam Hussein had these Scud missiles that he was launching at Israel. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's something to joke about or not, but. I mean, certainly it, it was a big part of the 90s, as I said. Uh, all right, catch catch him, Al. So as I've said several times already, you know, some of this stuff I'm a little bit too old for. And Pokemon is one of those things where, uh, you know, Pokemon became popular, at least here in the U.S., as a video game. Sometime in the late 90s, I want to say, like 96, 97. I don't even know when the first Pokemon games came out. And at that point, it was just like the last thing that I cared about. So to this day, uh, I've never played a Pokemon game. And I'm not saying that because I'm proud of it. Uh, people say that they're fun games, and so I should check one out. Uh, I have one. I don't know which one. But uh, my friend fished a Game Boy Color out of an e-waste bin at work and just gave it to me. He's like, here, I found this if you want it. And, uh, and it had some Pokemon game uh, in it. I forgot which one. It was one of the original... Uh, Game Boy games. It wasn't one of the Game Boy Color games, I don't think. Uh, lynched, lynched Laura. Oh, what was the name of that show? Um, 
It was lynched because of David Lynch. Twin Peaks. Twin. Well, kind of gives you the hint there. Twin Peaks. I never watched Twin Peaks. I remember my dad. Uh, shortly before my dad passed away, I remember he had been watching Twin Peaks and was telling me that it was a cool show and that I should check it out. But uh, to this day, I still never have. And uh, uh, Baby Dino. So what was this? This show was just called Dinosaurs, wasn't it? Uh, does it say, yeah, 90s TV sticker? Yeah, it was called, I think it was just called Dinosaurs. In fact, I remember that when I, I did that live read-through, magazine read-through with Corey, uh, we saw that there was that dino game, a Super Nintendo game, and Corey thought that it was a tie-in to the show, which it wasn't, but it was an a understandable uh, misconception. Uh, I think I watched this show a little bit. I don't think I really got that into it. But, uh, yeah, anyway, that's it. I don't know how long this video is, but uh, but that was a pretty cool walk down memory lane, and that's quite a few Garbage Pail Kids. Uh, I don't really know which one I like better, because the, um, these Battle of the Bands ones were pretty cool, uh, too. So, um, so, yeah, and I don't know what I'm going to do with this artwork over here. That's pretty neat, but I don't know what why I really need to keep that. But I'm not going to throw it out, but I don't know. Does somebody want that? Uh, anyway, I don't know. I hope this was enjoyable. I just figured, uh, you know, I had these things laying around. I thought it'd be cool to do a video and I just figured I would, you know, make it a video that was only for, you know, patrons and channel members, uh, for people that, uh, support the show, you know? So, uh, I hope to do more content, uh, like this for you guys to, you know, give you guys back a little something more, uh, for being, uh, being show supporters. So, so that's it for, uh, this episode of CGQ Underground. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.